Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CCT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to another session of Not Perfect Zen. Again, I'm so happy to be here. I am grateful to be feeling better and able to share some fun Zentangle ideas with you. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that I was doing this challenge called 100 Days of Tangling, and that is from the Tangle All Around group in Facebook. And it's run by um, Alice Hendon, and she just does an awesome job with that group. And this is the first time that I am going to do the 100 Days. Uh, there is a 100 Days project that starts soon, I think, but uh, this one started on January 1, and I used a template to do this and then just colored it in. This is from a disc-bound system, and I just got a sketchbook, and I cut it in half, and for me, it's a perfect size. It's five by seven, and I can get six bijou size tangles on here on each page so this was one through six and i will list all these in the description and i will also provide a link to the step outs if they are available outside of the facebook group i cannot provide the full list for you but i can show you the names and the people that deconstructed this as we go along. Um, I happened to do this one wrong. Uh, the list was not quite in order. And so <laughs> I had to redo this. So 11 was be light and 12 is see view. And what I'm thinking about doing and, um, uh, my plans change quite often, that's why this is not perfect, <laughs> is I want to share with you each week at least one pattern that I really like. Now, this is Field of Flowers by Melinda Barlow, and it's one of my favorite patterns. And then this is a new one that I just learned called Balt, B-A-U-L-T. And on the backs of these, I have just some notes and stuff. But a uh, nice thing about this is that I can take pages out, work on them, and then put them back in because I don't like to work with anything that has a binding, so this works out great for me. For example, this is what we're going to do today is something very similar, and I can just push it on here. I don't do this very often because it can make these little tabs too weak. But see, there you go. I can just add another page in there wherever I want. All right, so again, we're gonna do Field of Flowers, also known as F-O-F, -F, and then Balt, B-A-U-L-T, and that is by Aaron K-O-E-T-Z Olson. So Aaron Olson. All right, let's get started. I am going to be using a Zentangle, three and a half inch tile. I have my graphite pencil, a blending stump, also known as a tortillon, and I keep my little paper clip in there because that's just how I do it. It keeps the tip pointed. I have three different pins here. These are my favorite pins. Uh, I have a Micron 01, zoom in a little, a Micron 01, a graphic one, and a Micron PN. And you can use any pen, any paper that you have. So just letting you know that I have those on hand. All right, let's get started. <sighs> Take a deep breath and relax. And we are going to start with gratitude and appreciation. I am grateful that I have 
Zentangle supplies, whether it's just plain paper, plain pencils and pens. I'm grateful for Zentangle in my life. And mostly, I'm grateful for you because y'all make me feel so wonderful. I'm grateful to have now 11,000 subscribers. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. I'm doing the four corner dots and I'm doing them lightly. Okay, and then just uh, connect these, not trying to make them perfect. Just connect your lines, okay? So that gives us just a small area to work with. And for the first one, I'm going to use my Micron P01, sorry. And this is washi tape that I just got from Centangle, and I put a little bit around here because this is a new pen. <laughs> I want to remember which one is new because mine are getting so old. Okay, and I'm going to start with Balt, and that is B A U L T. And it is by Aaron. I guess that's Coates Olson. And the second one is FOF or Field of Flowers. And that's by Melinda, excuse my sloppy writing, Melinda Barlow. Okay, and I do encourage you to put the names of your patterns on the back of your tiles so that when you come back, you know what that name is, what that pattern's called, and you can find the information on it. Okay, so this one, I know you've seen patterns like this many times. And this one's just a little bit different. This one starts with like a half moon in the center. And then we're just going to do these simple petal shapes. Come up, come to a point, and come back around. All right? We're going to leave a little space in between. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. I found this one to be very relaxing because once you get this part down, it's just super simple. We're just going to keep turning and we're going to add another petal. This one is going to come from behind and come up and around and turn your tile. This helps your hand to have muscle memory. When you do the same strokes again and again, that's how people get good at their art. It's called practice. Okay, we turned, and now I'm gonna add another petal here. So these are between the two petals that are already there. Turn. And if you go past your little pencil border, that's fine. Okay, so we have these. You could stop here if you wanted, but let's go ahead and put one more over this one. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And we'll put one more here. Okay, so that is BALT, B-A-U-L-T. And next, you can do just all kinds of ways to embellish this. You could fill it with different patterns. You could just put the little hash lines. The most relaxing thing that I found to do was to just 
start with kind of a seed shape here. And then we're just going to add lines, auras, on each side. Okay, same thing down here. And when you take your time and enjoy each line, then that is what attracted me so much to Zentangle in the beginning. And that's why I still love it. And this year, I have decided to keep my social media aside first thing in the morning and then do my Zentangle meditation with peaceful music and patterns that I want to practice. And that's what made me love Zentangle in the beginning was that uh, I had been trying to meditate and was not super successful at it. I mean, I did it, but my mind wandered too much and I did not feel like it was benefiting me the way that it was supposed to. When I found Zentangle and started just listening to music and practicing new patterns. And at the time, everything was new to me. I guarantee it. I loved tangle patterns. And then there were two people that I followed the most on YouTube, and that was Melinda Barlow. And the other person, her channel was called Draw Tangles with Dawn. And her name is Dawn Collins. She's not a CZT, but I loved her videos. She always had such great ideas. Anyway, okay, we're just continuing to add these little seed shapes and our little auras on each side of our seed shape here. Oops. Turning your tile. And this one, these outer petals, it should look like it's going behind the first one. And I'm not worried if I have the same number of lines on each side. Uh, one thing I can do is add a little bit of darkness at the top of these leaves that are going behind. So for instance here, Okay, and you can also kind of darken these lines. It's called redefine the line. Okay, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. <laughs> We're going to continue to add these auras. Okay, remember to relax your shoulders, take deep breaths, and enjoy one line at a time. And when we do the shading, and it's very simple shading, it will make a big difference. Okay, so I'm going to redefine this line and this one. Notice none of these are perfect. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, and you can do the same thing on these tips. 
I like how that looks. Just the very tip. All right, like I said, it's gonna look different when we start adding the uh, shading to it. Okay, so next we're gonna do Field of Flowers. And um, in the Tangle All Around Facebook group, um, I went through all of the different tiles that people had done, and there's a lady, Diane, Marshall, who does full sketchbook pages of just one doodle or one pattern, and some of these are inspired but what, by what Diane Marshall did in Tangle All Around. I love what she does. So, let's do Field of Flowers. And I'm going to come to this side, and we're just going to start with part of an orb. And let's go ahead and bring this one around. And then we're going to fill it in. Okay. Now you can come back and do this later, but I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. And this is where I like to use my graphic one. Okay. <clears throat> and actually, I'm going to switch to my PN also. But a graphic one is a thick marker. And to save you from watching me fill this in a tiny bit at a time, then this fills things in a little bit faster. And it's the same ink. So it will match whatever you've already put down. Okay. Now, my PN. And next we're going to add an aura around that. And then we start doing the petals. And we're going to come from this way, come up a little bit, basically go straight across and come down. We're going to come up, go across, come down. It's okay if it has a little wiggle in it, and across. Okay, that is basically everything you need to know to do Field of Flowers. <clears throat> so let's add another one here. So we're going to put our partial orb, fill it in a little, um, I do not speed up my videos, even with something like this that's time consuming, you are welcome <clears throat> to use the YouTube controls. To speed it up. Now sometimes I'll get that far and then come back with the graphic one and it just kind of helps fill in the spaces. This is an older pen. I have a lot of old pens that I'm trying to weed out. But uh, there we go. We're going to put our aura. And then come over here and start our petals. So we're going to go up, over, down. And yes, I know it's winter, but this is one of our patterns, and I'll accept any excuse to draw botanical patterns, because that's my favorite. All right, there's that one. 
Let's do one up here. And we're going to make this one a little different. So we're going to do our half circle and our aura. <clears throat> but inside, let's just put some straight lines. You could even make this like Knight's Bridge. And then we're going to turn and come across this way. So if you don't want to fill these in, you could do it this, this way. Okay, again, over and down, up, over and down, up and over. You could put some extra little hash lines in here if you want to. Remember, this is your art. You can do all kinds of things with it. And with some of Diana's examples, you know, she had um, little rings. And this was my variation. So let's do one over here. And with this one, we're going to add that ring. And I put it on the inside because it was getting kind of big. So this time we're just going to put these little orbs. Okay, and then we can just leave that area open. And then put our little hash lines and we could add a dot at the top. Okay, so let's do another one here. And I am going to put a line here. And then let's make these kind of curved. Okay, same thing here. And again, like I said, you could fill these in like um, Knight's Bridge. And Knight's Bridge is just a checkerboard, okay? Black, white, black. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick so you can see. Okay, when I do my fill in, I want to go to the corner and then I know that's the next one I should be at. So go down. Even watching Rick and Maria when they do Knight's Bridge, they kind of do it that way. Go up into that one. If it's touching the corner, that corner, okay, so I'll go down. This one would come down to here. Okay, remembering to turn your tile, keep your hand comfortable. Okay, and I can come back with my Micron 01 and 
fill those in a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, let's do a different one here. And for this one, um, this is called stippling. So just along here, where there might be a shadow, I'm just going to do some dots. And then down here, just a little bit softer. Okay. Here's our petals. Up and across. Down. Up and across. It's going to go behind and come down. Behind and down. Okay. Here's our little hash line. And let's add one here. And remember to make this your art. You might not exactly like the way that I'm doing mine. And definitely do this the way that you would like it. Okay, so this was something that Diana had on... one of hers, little hash lines, and then inside, let's just add some orbs. And we're going to fill them in a little bit. It's going to make the middle of this kind of dark. not looking for perfect circles. We're just filling in a flower. Okay, just enjoy creating these orbs. Okay. There's that one. And now our petals. I'll make this one a little bit different too. Okay. So we can just continue adding. There's this one. I'm going to go ahead and bring this line down. Okay. Outer edge. Our petals. I just naturally want to put kind of a little dip there. <laughs> it can go straight across or it can dip down a little bit. And we're going to leave that one. Okay, let's put one more over here. And our petals are going to come up. Not a very big one. 
So we'll go ahead and fill this one in too. So I am in the Houston, Texas area. And we are supposed to have temperatures in the 20s coming up. And I know for some of you guys, that's like, so? Because <laughs> I have seen on Facebook where some of you guys, the temperatures are minus 40, minus 50. But the thing about Texas is our power grid. The last time that we were at 20 degrees for a couple of days, it went out. We had no power for several days, and that was terrible. It really was. It was young grandchildren, and we couldn't keep them warm. We were going from place to place trying to find power, and uh, yeah, it was rough. Anyway, I'm hoping things will be better this time around. All right, since I put my lines on that other side, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one in just because to make it consistent. Okay, <laughs> so this is different, but I wanted to uh, share these patterns with you. This just gives you an idea and you can just take this and run with it. And I know there's a couple of you out there who will do it. Okay, so I am going to add simple shading on this one. So around the outside of each petal, we're just going to add our graphite. It will make a big difference. Okay, coming around this one. And I'm pointing my pencil toward the line where I want to add the shading. And I'm trying to make sure that I touch that line. I don't want to leave space in between because your, your eye will see it. Kind of like there. Okay, so in other words, if I came to this side and I put my pencil way out here, then that wouldn't be good. So, touch it. And it helps if you have a sharp pencil. Okay. Now on this side, this one goes behind. So wherever one petal goes behind another one, we're going to add some shading there also. Here and here. Okay. Now with my tortillon, I'm just going to push that shading up into the petal. Okay. So just keep turning. Like I said, this is very simple shading. Push it up and just blend it lightly to make sure you don't have an obvious line. All right, then we're going to go up to the next one and do the same thing. So we're just going to keep pushing up. Same here. And both of these patterns are very simple to add shading to.
very softly when you get it to the edge. Okay, I do tend to concentrate and I stop talking. <laughs> and if you're following along, then hopefully you're able to follow what I'm doing without too much chatter. Again, you can speed this up with YouTube controls. You can slow it down. You can pause and go back. That's the nice thing about videos. All right, doesn't that look better? All right, we're gonna do basically the same thing down here. Let's go along the outside of this one. Okay, the next one. Okay, so just outside of that aura, we're going to add graphite. And if one of these is behind another, we're going to add a little bit of graphite there also. Okay. Along the outside here. These are simple patterns, a simple tile. There is so much Zentangle inspired art out there that is just fantastic art. And I love looking at it, but um, I'm a perfectionist and I cannot do that kind of art. And that's okay because I love the old classic Zentangle that was popular when I first found Zentangle. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit here where these go behind. Okay, and this one. Okay, so let's start with this, get my tortillon, and then I'm just going to soften that on each one of those. Okay, just keep going. Just this simple shading can add so much. And I said I was going to put these lines down the side, so let's make that one match. And now this one. Now I'm going to show you how to make this one almost look like a Zen gym. And what we're going to do is darken this even more down here. OK. 
Okay, we're gonna add a kind of dark, making sure we keep this line open, this aura. And now we're just gonna push this gently up and bring this one down a little. Keep pushing up, but we're gonna leave a highlight here, okay? So, it's an easy way to make something similar to a gemstone. And I have a tiny <laughs> eraser, and I just want to get the gray out of there. Whoop. You could even come back with a jelly roll pen and put white in here. And you could put different colors on each one of these. Would be really cool. Okay, I think we're done. Like I said, you can go back and add any other enhancements. And it's kind of an odd combo, maybe, but I wanted to show these two patterns for you. Uh, Okay, so again, well, my page came out, so that's how easily that can come out. So we had Balt, and we had Field of Flowers. And again, I will put all the information down in the description, so... If you look at the description, there will be a link that says more. Click on that, and wherever I can take you to a step out, it will be in the link. Okay? Thank you so much for joining me again. It's awesome to be back, and I'll be back soon with another of the 100 Days of Tangling Patterns. Thanks again for joining me. Please hit the like button, share, subscribe. All those things help my channel so much. See you next time. Bye.